Welcome to Just Lyrics with Jake Michael. Today's guest is Al Bien, who has been writing lyrics for a million years and has performed everywhere. And because I don't believe in introductions, I will begin with the first question, which is, when you were like five years old, just a little kid, what sort of music did you hear? What was in the air? What was, you know, soaking into your head? Well, I had a little Victrola or a little record player. And, yeah. And I um, listened to a lot of, uh, I listened to a lot of music in my grandparents' house. Um, Sons of the Pioneers. Um, Perry Como. Sons of the Pioneers, that's old cowboy music, right? Well, part of it was. Not Perry Como wouldn't be cowboy music. Right. Or, or um, Dean Martin. Bing Crosby. Uh huh. This was, and where was this at? They lived in, in uh, Overbrook. Overbrook, so that's a neighborhood of Philadelphia for. Yep. For our listeners out there, and. And, and, and for a birthday, for one of my birthdays, they gave me my own, and I had some little golden records. Were those actual yellow records? They were. Some of them were yellow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, and he was mentioning those too. And those were were those children's out records for kids. They were. Yeah, and what was the what were they? Well, I mean, what were the songs? Uh, it's a long time ago, so I may be mixing up my eras here. I don't care. But I do, oh, I do recall uh, one record I had was it came upon a midnight clear. Uh huh. And I played that over and over. Yep. I have a lot of records, so that was number one in the hit parade. Uh-huh. And then cool. shortly thereafter, I had um, uh, Davy, Ballad of Davy Crockett. Yeah. And um, on the other side was Bang Goes Old Betsy, A Trusty Gun is Betsy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. That's good. All right. So, um... So eventually, you've been writing songs for a long time. Uh, what was the first song you wrote that made you think, I could be a songwriter, I could do this, I could continue to do this? Okay, the first song that I wrote that convinced me that I probably should not quit my day job was uh, Through Doors of Crystal Snow, Past the Rushing Tide. And it brought me to tears with the exquisite uh, nature of the lyric. And I subsequently uh, realized that I was delusional. And um, I did write a couple things. Um, Gentle Smile, Nights and Things, K-A-N-I-G-H-T-S-N -I -I uh -huh. Things. Yeah. And Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol. How old were you when this is going on? Uh, probably, probably 1920, maybe in, in that era. Okay, now and yeah. you you play piano and guitar. What were you what what were you were you originally composing on the piano or the guitar or something else? I didn't really. Uh, I, I really was playing guitar. The piano I didn't resume until, um, I guess, in earnest um, when Ben Gall had the art scene, and they had a beautiful uh, uh, Steinway. It wasn't Steinway, but it was designed by Steinway. Great piano. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would go in there and they would let me uh, play it during lunchtime. And, and uh, I would go in and play it. And I, I, I resumed my love of the piano, which my, my initial love of the piano began when I was uh, at my grandparents' house. They had a Steinway Grand and, and I would go in and play it. And they would come in and smack me and say, get off that. You can go down and play that. That uh, Chinese tack piano in the basement, which was out of tune and sounded like crap. Uh huh. So, um, and I understand when you're three or four years old, they don't want you. And I wasn't really being being uh, rough with it. I really loved the piano. Yeah. So, were they? Uh, I mean, having two pianos in the house, were they musical people or? Not really. Or just. I, I don't know why they had it. Um, I, uh, my grandfather liked to entertain, uh -huh. and um, but he didn't play. I don't know whether my grandmother played. I don't know whether she did. Huh. And uh, but they had a beautiful Steinway Grand piano. 
Yeah. And a piece of junk that red tack piano in the basement. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's good. So uh, here's the, the make believe question. Um, you know the Brill building in New York? I certainly have heard of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's 1964. You are trying to get a job in the Brill building as a lyricist. Like, uh, um, you know, they, had, they hired people who were just lyricists back then. But the Brill building was like this Tin Pan Alley hit making machine in the 50s. Why I'm 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 whoever is in the Brill building. Tell me why I should hire you to be a lyricist. Um, well, at that time, I'm not really sure I would have thought about. That. No, no, no. It's now you. It's now 1964 and you're walking in to the Brill building right now as you are today, not as you were in 1964. 1964. Oh, right I, was, now? I was oh. wet in the bed, you know. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, I have a, uh, I think I have a, I have a appreciation of lyrics, internal rhyme, and I love, I love words. Uh -huh. And just as a lyricist, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I love words. I love the sound. I love uh, alliteration, uh -huh. and I I love uh, I tend to be a little romantic and possibly uh, like to have a lyric with some kind of purpose uh -huh. when I write, and uh, I, I enjoy it. Yeah, that's that, that's you know that that's good for hit music. Hit um, the parodies and i also like uh i like taking other people's stuff and taking it apart yeah 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 okay Al along those lines um in i always see songwriting as there's there's the narrative component and then there's kind of this impressionistic component which is more like setting uh is there any one song that you have that you think is especially strong and maybe you don't that's like a strong narrative, really tells a story, really tells a tale within a song. Um, well, I have the, the song that this, the Mr. Steinway, which uh, is a song that tells about my experience when I was three years old, uh -huh. fall in love with the piano and that, that the piano could take you places, um, just kind of get lost in, in the music. Yeah. Uh, of course, the the it it tells that story about that, and uh, I'd say that might be a candidate for something with a story. How about the other side, which is uh, very impressionistic? Almost, uh, I always say there's 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 a lot of songs where um, I have no idea what they're about, and I don't care. You know, they just set this, they set an image, they set a scene, they they get you in a frame <laughs> yeah. of mind. Well, the Christmas Carol, uh, the song I wrote, Christmas Carol, has kind of a uh, a lyrical, nice beginning. It starts with a with a little strain. It starts with the strains of uh, uh, Jingle Bells, uh -huh. and kind of tries to paint a picture. Um, and that might be, although I I I think that I'm more likely. Um, I try to have some things make sense. Yeah. And and be concrete rather than so much uh, when you're just putting things together that, that maybe as as a lyricist you understand, but maybe other people would, would not. Now, do you ever get bothered as a, a mutual friend of ours, Chris Adams? <laughs> I was telling him how I, I wrote this, uh, he wrote this song and I was like, I, not, that's, that's, not a, that's not what I thought it was about at all. <laughs> Do you ever have people come up to you and they're, you know, I really love that song because it's, you know, and then you're just sitting there going, that's really not what that song is about. But they've just with, interpreted your words differently. With, 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 my, with my own songs, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you sort of have an intent about what they're about and then other people... Or with, or with Chris's songs. <laughs> no, no, with your songs, with your songs. Just kidding. I love Chris. He's great. Um, the, mm, I guess there are things when, when people, it's funny, you, you do them so much and then somebody might suggest something and you look at it and say, no, I guess it could be interpreted like that. Yeah. 
which is kind of interesting and, and maybe allows you to have more objectivity and maybe look at the words a little more closely, although it's, it's, it's not easy to get outside of your creative box and, yeah. and look at the, and look at the lyrics in, in a more, uh, I don't know what you'd say, uh, objective way. Now, as I recall, you, you, you've got a degree in English. I do. And do you find that that, uh, so as you're sitting here, you're talking about your lyrics using some highfalutin terms. Do you, uh, do you think that, that that sort of your understanding of literature and stuff like that has affected your lyrics or is it, is it just a completely, part of the different, a completely different part of your brain that's operating or somewhere in between? I would say not so much and I wish um, that I had been more focused on um, going to uh, studying uh, for the right reasons rather than because it was a certain time and that was the thing everyone did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also because of the uh, the time frame, the when back and I, I began uh, at Villanova in 1967, the um, even if you weren't crazy about uh, what you were learning, you knew that uh, that you had a student deferment, and that would allow oh. you to continue to study, right, and live. And not yeah. Well, that's uh, that's cool. Um, how about you talked about wordplay, and uh, is there any like something you're really proud of as far as wordplay or the architecture or certain, you know? something really creative that you did in, in part in in terms of rhyming or unusual imagery something like that um you mean something specific why well, I, I like all of them huh i like all of them well, I, well I, then give us an example from your from your catalog of if you've got anything that you think's like a really good uh, um Well, one I've, I've written recently, yeah, uh, which is uh, Valentine's Day, and um, Valentine's a special day. It happens once a year. We take the time to celebrate and make our feelings clear. It isn't just the jewelry or the roses that I gave, or signing a hallmark and adding a phrase. How do I love you? When I count the ways, I run out of fingers and sweet things to say. How long is forever? I guess we'll find out. We'll be together through the years. <laughs> That's good. A little sappy. No, but you know that's being as a songwriter apologizing for being sappy is kind of like that's the nature of the game, man. And and um, I think my wife Clara had the coolest line of it, which was signing a hallmark and adding a phrase. Yeah, that was basically her idea, which I thought was really that thing. Adding a phrase was cool. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it goes rhythmically and and with the rhyme, it goes in with the with the structure. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, you have I'm familiar with enough of your songs to to guess what is your what your big hit is. Most people have one or two songs that are their big hits. Whenever you show up, people go play that song. The question is kind of. What is your big hit, and why do you think people have latched on to that song? Why is that the song that people request versus the rest of your things? Um, well, I'm not really sure about what that big hit is, and I haven't gotten the royalties for it yet. You but never <laughs> well, there, there's a couple songs that, that uh, the one song, Swimming Around in Circles. Right. People like that song. That was the and that was the one I was thinking of. Yeah, 
for for whatever reason it's kind of kitschy and and clever and and clara sings it with me right tongue in cheek it's got a nice chorus it's got a nice melody and uh and it's got it goes running around in circles da 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 my mind what's that How, it's running or, I, or is it swimming around in circles or running i'm swimming around in circles I can't make up my mind. And when I look inside myself, I don't know what I'll find. Bum, 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 bum. Right. That's funny, because I have remembered that as running round in circles. And I've well, heard it. I'm a, I'm a uh, astrologically, I'm a Pisces, and uh, that's my, the sign of my, the astrological sign is two fish. Uh -huh. Swim directions. Which is interesting because I've always interpreted that song as um, almost like st stuck in a vortex of water, and and you can't make up your mind, and it's just and it's just like the water is just taking you around, and you're just going well, around with the water. Uh, Jake, that is pretty much it. And sometimes, uh, you know, I do tend to think things out, and Clara's being a little more uh, assertive, and that's the, her her line is, I'll, I'll tell you what to do yeah you know so she has an idea and i'm i'm thinking of all the options while time is passing yeah that's cool um and i i guess it uh you were saying it was it was that you thought it was popular just because it's i don't know witty well, or, or, but that's one thing people usually oh that's really cool and they like to snap their fingers it's got a nice chorus to it yeah. And I we played it at we play it out live and that's one of the more popular ones. Chris Chris and I, Chris Adams and I kind of have a yep. a musical byplay back and forth with a little whimsical humor and, and uh makes it interesting and he sings and Clara sings on the chorus. It's yeah. good. Okay, yep. well this is the uh, this goes into the uh this goes into the personal embarrassment part of the interview. I'm already um, embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you agreed to even be on this on this broadcast shows that you, you clearly you don't have too much pride um what critically pan song so this is a song that everyone says sucks but you like it this is kind of the guilty pleasure or or genre of music or what is something that you that you are sort of embarrassed to admit that you really like musically um sappy songs uh some of the old songs like uh the you remember the song by bobby gold i, I think it was bobby goldsboro maybe not honey incredibly uh remember that song i don't know how's it go you remember it no, I, I, sure. I, I, honey i miss you and i'm being good and i'd love to be with you if only I could see the tree, how big it's grown. But friend, it hasn't been too long. It wasn't big. Uh -huh. And I laughed at her and she got mad the first day that we planted it. it was just a twig. <laughs> it's actually, you know, that's a nice. Saccharin and silly. And, yeah, you know, it's every now and then I will sing it. If, if you want to feel, you know, it's it's one of these. Like the, the genre back in, um, and you're probably a little younger than I am, but back in, in the 50s, the, 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 uh, the teen tragedy songs. Uh huh. Tell Laura I Love Her. Right. Song Teen Angel. Right, Teen Angel, yeah. Night the Car Stall, Upon the Railroad Track. Yeah. That's something and it pulled you, but you went running back. Yeah, right, right, right. right. And and uh, or patches. Remember that song? <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with that. It was, all, like, it was a big. It was big for a while. People were dying and and cr dying and crying. And patches, my son. It was like patches. His name was the son was patches or something. It was a song to his son as the guy was dying or something. By the river that flows by the cold. There lives. A house with shutters torn down. There lives a girl everyone buddy calls Patches. 
Patch is my darling of old shanty town. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, it's just and oh running bear. How about that one? Remember that, that one? Know. That I don't know at all. The Backs of the River, another one of these teen uh um actually teen suicides, which and not kind of I mean it was silly running uh, it was um about two Indians uh -huh. swimming out. Their tribes were at war, so they couldn't be together. And uh, had a had a pretty pretty sad ending. It's like yep. like Irish music. As long as everyone's dead at the end, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Danny Boy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I love Danny Boy. Now the opposite of that would be: Is there any uh, like critically acclaimed music or or performer or genre that you don't like, where everyone says, "Oh, you know, you should like these." These these people are very highly regarded, but you just you just don't like them. Well, there's there's uh, and I do like uh, the group America has a number of uh, nonsensical songs, uh -huh. including "Horse with No Brain." Remember like, that one? Uh, yeah. The the where it's just it doesn't make any sense, but they're poppy. Yeah. And they have some Ventura Highway and uh, Tin Man and things like that. The, musically, they are the most boring songs in the world. It's like two chords, like horse with no name, yeah. like minor, major, minor, major. Well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but they're very popular, and um, they're, you know, people like them, and they made a lot, a lot more money than I could even think of making. I, I, I'm not disparaging anyone. To, yeah, who am I to judge? Yeah. Right. As I say, Barry Manilow, does he want to go out there and sing Oh Mandy every single time he gets on stage? Probably not, but he does it because he's a professional. It's a hit for him. I support him 100%, you know? And that was a poppy, kind of a nice tune, too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. he had other, I don't, can't remember any of his other hits, but yeah, nice chorus. Yeah, no, Copacabana, he had a bunch, and he did all the... Oh. He did a lot of those commercials. He did a lot of commercials. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. I think this thing only only goes for twenty minutes because in the internet era, no one has any. Uh, you know, no one can memorize or watch anything for more than twenty minutes. So we're pretty much, we're pretty much wrapped up. I guess okay. what I'll give you is a, a chance to uh, plug. Where can people hear your music online? And also. It's my understanding that you operate a business that musicians might be interested in. Okay, that would be the Westchester Music and the Springfield Music Store, although we've been closed through the pandemic. Yeah. Trying to slowly and safely open things up a little bit. If you need strings or accessories, and they can call, it's WC Music Store at yahoo.com. Yep. And um, then the, the Springfield Store, Springfield Music Store, at yahoo.com yeah we're we've we've been slowly getting back at, you know like 12 to 3 something like that which i'm starting to like <laughs> that may not be a good thing oh i know it might not be a good thing the uh, limited hours are you know we're doing things online and stuff like that yeah uh, i we're work, i'm working on a couple of videos right now we're working on videos we did one coronaville a video uh <laughs> It's a parody of, of Margaritaville. Yeah, yeah, And uh, that's on the YouTube site, Coronaville. And I have a video of the um, Steinway. If people want to hear just your music, do they go there? Or do you have your own, like, website or something? I, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, Reverb Nation. I've got some things. I'm on Facebook. i got a page on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, some things. And I'm working on a couple things now. I love the creative process. Yeah. And I enjoy, even if no one was listening, I would love it. Yep. Well, I just enjoy the sounds and I just, you know, like with the piano, I'll play and I'll play, I'll take one song, I'll play it. And it, just the same way when I, when I was uh, starting guitar, I discovered uh, tunings. Right, right. Joni and her, with uh, Cactus Tree. I believe I heard the song on Gene Shea's show. And I couldn't figure, wow, what's, because the strings were tuned differently. How is that, how, how are we getting that sound? Yeah. 
and then I discovered it, and then you detune the guitar, put it in a, in a chord, and you're going for days. Yeah. Just the way the strings react differently, and it's a, it's a nice thing. Same way with the chordings, and, you know, just play it one time, and then you add a little something. Oh, I like that. Just yeah. a beautiful thing. It's like finger painting in the, yeah. in the it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole state of flow. You know, you just, I find, oh. and you sit there and you go, oh, it's two in the morning. I started this at eight o'clock. Well, and particularly when, it, when it's uh, getting ready for work, and it, well, I'm gonna sit down for a little bit, you know, because I, I, I get up very early. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm start playing at, you know, seven o'clock and Cloud be upstairs sleeping, and then before you know, it's like, oh, it's ten o'clock. Time for breakfast. Yeah, I I get that all the time. It's like I had this idea last night, and I, and I'll sit down for five minutes to try to figure it out, and it's like, oh shit, I got to go to work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I w the I think the mantra is, work when you have to, play when you can. Yeah, yeah. But all sometimes, right. if you play first, you forget. Yeah. It's on the horizon. Well, that's a good way to end this thing. So, Al, right. you write good songs. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you kindly.